Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning about dedicated servers and their logs. So a dedicated server has a log of the player activity, but it can be kind of frustrating to figure out how to read it. As you can see, this is what it looks like. So in this video, I'm going to show you what exactly you can get out of this log and how to tell what's happening. And if you want to set up your own dedicated server and do what you're seeing here, then you can check out my tutorial that shows you exactly how to buy your own dedicated server with Zap. So moving on, we need to know where to find this log file, right? Right, so you're on the management page. You can see it's telling me the server's online. There's the IP address. You can log on yourself if you want to. Um, so from here, you need to go down over to the bottom and you see where it says FTP browser. This is basically a way for you to look at the files on your server. And that's what you need to do to get the log, okay? So you'll click on this FTP browser thing and then it'll tell you the information here. You can use FileZilla typically. And then I've already done that before so I can just log on to the server this way. And then it'll have like kind of a name here that's just random, don't worry about that. Once you open this, then you'll see, sorry, you'll see the actual Valheim, Valheim files. And in order to get to the logs, you need to go to Valheim slash Linux here, right? And then if you just scroll down, you'll see these screen log things. And it usually keeps a couple. And the way it works is screen log dot zero contains the most recent stuff that's currently being written. Once you download this, all you have to do is just kind of double click. That's gonna download it over here. And just so you know, this part here is just your desktop. Don't worry about reading the file. That's not something you need to do. You really need to just use this control find. This control find feature is how you can actually parse through and get what you need quickly. And there's a couple keywords that you need to learn in order to find the information that you need. And the first is ZDOID, okay? It is all caps in the server, but it doesn't really matter. I could just type it this way, um, like this, and it would work, okay? Make sure it sets it down and then find the next one. And let's find one for me, okay? Now, if we look at this ZDOID thing, you can see that we know the date, the server time, and then it says got character zdoid from gull, and then it has this number string here. I've never figured out how to get the location out of this string of numbers. I don't know how that works. I've looked, I've tried, I've triangulated, never figured that out. So it looks like this is just a, an ID that's assigned to the person and then this number means something I don't know. What I can tell you is that this character Zdoid thing means the, the location of your character when you log in, in that moment, that line shows up. And then it'll also show up when you die. And that's because if you think about it in Valheim, what happens is you die, the screen goes black, and you wake up at the center of the world or at your spawn point. So this is how you know somebody died. When you see this zero zero zedoid thing, that means that somebody died and went back, I assume, to the center of the world. It might also show a zero zero even if they just go back to their spawn point. I honestly don't know. But I can tell you that this line is when the character logs into the server. And then this line is when they die. And this is the Steam ID. So if you want to send me a friend request or, you know, spam me or something, you can just use this because Gull is me. Gull is the character name and the Steam ID is what you would use to either add a person as an admin, allow them to log on to the server in the first place, or ban them so they can't log on to the server. So when somebody does something you don't like, you look here, you find their character name, and then you look for their Steam ID and you take this number and then you add that to the ban list, okay? 
But there's more that you can do with this. And let me show you another example. You can actually approximate where on the server people are playing. And let me show you how this works. This will only work when the server loads a new location. So if I find the next location, we can see here that it said place locations in zone 153, negative three. Okay, what you're looking for is this kind of message where you know, okay, this player, this person was playing and it was only them. And then the game placed a location in this zone. So you know they were exploring and the game placed a new thing over here in zone 153, negative three. But now the question comes up, what is zone 153, negative three? Or where is that exactly? And that's pretty easy to break down. Let's look more at the Valheim map itself. All right, I'm using this Valheimians map tool. If you haven't seen this before, there's a whole bunch of other videos. You can check one of mine out that introduce you to it. Coincidentally shows the exact coordinates, right? If I am in the center, I'm close to zero, zero. If I go all the way over here, I'm at 10,000 and basically zero. If I go all the way up here, I'm at zero and 10,000. All the way over here, negative 10,000, zero and all the way over here, zero, 10,000. So there's basically a grid of 10,000 units that you can use to represent an exact location anywhere in Valheim. Each of these zones represents 64 of those units. So if we go back to our map here, there's 10,000 units, right? So I need to bring up a calculator and we divide 10,000 by 64. And that means that the, 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 the biggest the number can be in the world is zone 156. That means that it is all the way at the edge of the world. So this location here, 153, negative three, is actually very, very, very far this way. It's about right here to find the exact location is take this number and multiply it by 164. So we take 153, we go to our calculator, 153 times 64, and then we have almost 10,000, 9,007, 9,800. So we know that on the X axis, so to speak, we need to go to 9,000 800, right there basically. So we know that the location that was explored was roughly right here. And that's because I teleported my character right here, right there to the edge of the world. And because my character went there, it loaded locations on the edge of this map. And that's how you can parse through server logs to figure out where players are. You can't tell exactly where they are, but you can get a very good location. And if you look around yourself and visit, then you'll be able to find exactly what they've been doing. But here comes a question. I mean, if you wanna check and see these locations and you wanna see what the server has been doing, you have to go all the way there yourself. I mean, that could take a while, right? And what, you have to sail there? No, I'm gonna teach you a dedicated server host trick that the other Valheim players can't do. First, you need to understand that dev commands in these things, typically, don't work on dedicated servers. Whereas on your own computer, when you just play a local Valheim game, you can use dev commands. Here we are, now that we're in our server. This is my clone of the dedicated server. So I can run around and I can use dev commands here, right? I can type dev commands and then I can type go to and then negative 10,000. I don't know, it was like 9,800, right? 9,800 and then let's do zero. And this is gonna take me all the way to that location at the edge of the world. However, I'm currently on 
my clone of the world, right? You can see I'm all the way over here in this area by these missiles. And now all I have to do is log out. Because this is a clone of the dedicated server, my character's location will actually get saved and be the same whether I'm logging into the clone or the dedicated server. And then boom, look at that. Here I am on the actual dedicated server. You can tell because the join code pops up right here, right? And I'm in this location. So I just teleported on this dedicated server where I'm not supposed to be able to use dev commands or do that kind of thing. And you need to be aware of this as a host just because anybody with your files who knows what they're doing could also do this. So there we have it. Now you know how to figure out where people are playing on your server. You can also see that when the game spawns a location, it'll tell you what kind of dungeon. Here, this DG Dverger town thing means that it loaded a Mistlands abandoned mine. You can see that you also get to see how many available rooms are here. So if you want to go through and actually find like the deepest possible dungeon, so when you do that, you can look and see how many rooms it ended up having, right? So if I just search for this dungeon loaded thing here, we can find if it happened again. And as always, if you want to support my work, then please consider checking out my video that's all about renting dedicated servers. This is a great way uh, to play Valheim just because this way your Valheim world can be molded and changed by other people. And it makes it a lot more interesting in the long run because once you've kind of gotten used to Valheim, you know how the game works, how it places things, then it can get a bit boring if you're just playing single player and that kind of thing or even with friends, like you, you get used to the gameplay loop, right? Once you expect, you know exactly what's going to happen, and the game does that. It can get kind of monotonous. But when you play a dedicated server, especially if you're making it yourself and seeing and changing it based on how people play on it, uh, it, it really opens up a whole whole new way to enjoy the game. And I love it. It's, it's, it's really awesome. So I'm, I'm hoping that you guys will appreciate this and uh, enjoy <laughs> having your own dedicated servers as much as I do. And if there's anything else you'd like to know, let me know. I'm happy to make more tutorial tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!